Hey guys, Matthew here, and in today's video, I want to share with you guys the methodology that people use, the metagame, if you want to call it that, uh, that the people who make a ton of currency go about, uh, you know, making as much currency as they do. Now, in today's video, I mostly want to focus on the very, very early stage of a league, which is mostly the first, I don't know, three to five days or something. I'll have some other videos focusing on the later part of the league uh, for people who start league late or how to, like, go about after the initial uh, start of the league. Uh, but in today, I really want to focus on the initial part because I think that's where a lot of people have the most amount of time to play and accomplish the least amount of stuff, okay? So most people will, you know, it's, it starts on the weekend for the league. So most people will either have the whole weekend off or they'll even have additional day off from work and stuff like that. And it's funny to see that this is typically where most people make the least amount of currency while they have the most amount of time to play. Uh, because the thing is that the mindset that you need to have in terms of making currency uh, is very, very different in a league start scenario. But I've got a few disclaimers before I go about it. So the first disclaimer is that a lot of people think if, uh, that it requires a lot of skill, right? Or a lot of time or, you know, a crazy good build or some broken mechanic, right? Not at all. Matter of fact, in today's video, I want to mostly focus on Hideout Warrior. So if you're somebody who has limited time to play or who just doesn't like this idea of sitting in your hideout in order to make as much currency as possible, this video is probably not going to be for you, right? Uh, so I really want to focus on Hideout Warrior because nothing is going to come anywhere near uh, a Hideout Warrior in terms of currency generation in a League Start scenario. It's not even close uh, how much a Hideout Warrior can make versus anyone else in the game in a League Start scenario. Uh, yeah, as long as you know you know what you're doing. And the second thing is a lot of people tend to think that these methods require a crazy amount of time, a crazy amount of playtime. That's also not the case. Uh, as long as you're playing more than a few hours a day, you could totally get yourself a very, very successful league start. Now, of course, in your league start, typically the more you play, the better it's going to be because it's, it's almost a race at the start of a league. Uh, to try to get as much stuff done as possible to try to snowball as much as possible which is something i'll be talking about a lot today is snowballing all right so let's get into the actual thick of it now the way that i want to make this video is is uh it, i don't have any script or anything like that so there might be some you know things talking about this and then talking about that and then coming back and all that but it's all going to tie into you might have to watch it a few times, but it's all going to tie into essentially how to really maximize how much currency you can make in a league start scenario. All right, so first off, let's go over the common things that people know about, right? Well, efficiency, right? Being efficient at playing the game or whatever, or whatever you're doing, you want to be efficient. It still stays the same when it comes to being a hideout warrior. You want to be as efficient as possible. You, you can't be any more efficient than people respond to your PMs or people buying your items. So in the end, there's not much you could do there. All right, another thing that you'll see a lot of people telling you, uh, myself included, is, you know, go on the builds part of PoE Ninja and then look at, you know, the most main used spells, the main used skills or whatever, like the stuff that's the most meta, and then craft for those builds. Also a really good idea. Now, the problem is this. First off, what you really need to think about is who has currency in a League Start scenario, right? Like, who is going to be able to buy my items? So this is step one. This is the first thing you need to think about. Who has currency? All right, so I'll give you a minute to think about it. Pause the video if you actually want to think about it. But I'm actually going to go ahead and tell you. It's not the people on the ladder, okay? So these people who are on the ladder, right, pushing for levels, pushing for XP, pushing Atlas, pushing this, pushing that, most of them, in a League Start scenario, are not going to have any real currency to speak of. Now, why is that? Because pushing ladder, pushing XP, pushing all that typically doesn't really reward you with any real amount of currency. Sure, there's maps and you can sell maps, right? That's great. But maps only start selling at a certain point. And of course, you know, super, super early into the league, nobody buys maps. And then when people start buying maps, typically what you'll sell is white maps. And then after that, yellow maps. And then way later on, red maps, right? It's hard to sell red maps 12 hours into the league, even if you are in red maps, because nobody needs those. The people who are able to farm these red maps 12 hours into the league typically are going to have their own red maps because they know how to progress the Atlas, right? The people who will buy maps from you are the people who are stuck. And the people who are in red maps 12 hours in and need those red maps, they're not going to get stuck because they know their way around the Atlas and they know how to prevent that from happening. 
So question is who has currency? All right, well, groups, right? Groups have a lot of currency very quickly. And I mean, it's, it's simple why they have a lot of currency. There's multiple players and typically they're going to pool their currency uh, in order to uh, basically buy the items that they need as early as possible, okay? So the people you wanna focus on the most, is, and now, now I'm not so much talking about the initial weekend. I'm not talking about the first three to four days of the league. I'm talking about like the first 12 hours, right? The first, eh, maybe not, maybe like a little bit more than that. Uh, but the first like 16 hours, 16 to 24 hours, right? Who has currency in the first 16 to 24 hours? Who's actually going to be able to buy items that are, you know, at least a few exalts groups. Those are the only people who will realistically have any money. Now, of course you could be like, wait, what do you mean? I dropped the doctor and I sold it for X amount and like 16 hours into the league. I had like eight X in my stash. Sure. Right. But that doesn't mean that everybody else drops a doctor and sells it for 8x right that doesn't mean that everybody else drops a six link shafts and sells it for whatever right they're the vast majority of players are dead broke they have nothing but groups typically even if they're not that great they will have some currency and they will be willing to spend it on upgrades why well because typically when they're playing in a group they're going to need somebody to be strong in order to carry the rest of the groups to make currency to then gear up the rest of the group to do harder content and then they work their way up like that gradually until they get to the end game end game which is typically going to be delirious maps right if we look at uh most of the big groups they do 100 percent delirious maps uh and with a with a full-time trader or whatever and that's how they go about it okay so now the next question is like a sub question of that question right and that is in the groups who are the people who will get uh the most amount of currency invested into them the earliest and that is very simple it's aura bots it's always going to be the aura bots because the aura bots are the people who carry everyone else it's not the carry that carries it's the aura bots right so these are the people who will have the most amount of currency invested into their builds as fast as humanly possible so when you're thinking what should i flip what should i craft what should I do in order to generate currency, right? How do I generate currency right now? If you're within like the first day of a league, the first 24 hours, you want to think of or bots. Those are the people who will buy items that are multiple exalts and pretty much nobody else, right? So these are the people you want to focus on. Okay. Anybody else has money? Is it just groups? Like, is that it? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. The reality is yes. If you're talking about multiple exalt items, Groups are the only people who will be able to afford those. All right, now let's move on to what if we're talking about less than, you know, multiple exalt items? What if we're talking about 1x items? What if we're talking about 2x items, maybe even 3x items? Now, we're going to go back to the pushers, okay? So if we're talking about multiple, multiple exalts, 5x, 6x, 7x, 10x, whatever, typically groups related stuff, typically or bots. If we're talking about things that are like 1x or 2x, no more than 2x. Realistically, th even 3x is like hard to come by. Uh, it also depends on the league, right? If the league is very rewarding, think of, for example, Ultimatum, right? Very, very rewarding. Think of versus the league that we just we're, we have right now, Expedition, not at all rewarding, right? You made zero currency from it for the most part in the initial state of the game. It becomes more rewarding as you go, and now the, the currencies are starting to have value, but in, in the initial state, most people made no currency from the league uh, for the most part. Most of the people were actually skipping it, If I'm, and when I say most people, I mean the people who are you know, pushing for currency uh, because there was not much money to be made there. Uh, but those are the people who will have that much currency, right? So if I go to the first day of the league right now, right, and I go to Experience Ladder and I go day one, these people here at the top of the ladder, these are the guys who are more likely to buy anything else from me that is like 1x or above compared to anyone else. So if I'm thinking of, hmm, what should I be flipping? What should I be crafting? This is where I want to focus on these guys. So if we look at the items, right? So the next answer is going to be pushers. But no more than maybe let's say 2, 3x. And that's like that's like really really big this 2-3x here is big if you make an item for 5x for a pusher on the first day of the league 
nobody's going to buy it, right? So when you're thinking of crafting, when you're thinking of flipping, keep that in mind. Nobody is going to buy this, okay? Uh, if it's more than just a few X in terms of the pushers. But if we look at the pushers, there is a lot of ice traps. For example, this league, there was a lot of Toxic Rain, a lot of Ray Spectre, a lot of, uh, you know, quite a few different builds. But ice trap was king. Now, one thing that's unfortunate with things like ice trap is that there's not really anything you can craft for these guys. They're mostly unique only builds. And then they just use life and res, right? You're not going to be crafting weapons. It's almost always a bad idea to craft weapons. Um... For, for things that are as specific as like plus levels because there's no way to target it. You know, you're, most of the gear that you look at on, on these guys is just really, really bad. Okay. But if there is mandatory uniques that they need, this is where you can shine as somebody who's a hideout warrior. Uh, because a lot of the mandatory uniques uh, for, for different builds will have either roles that people tend to care about uh, or they'll have, you know, a divination card that you can take advantage of. Thinking of Tabula Rasa, for example... You could buy, you know, uh, what's it called? The um, uh, Humility Div card or the Vanity Div card, right? And then you could build the tabula from its pieces. Let's just say you buy Humility cards at 2C each. There's nine of them. It takes you 18C. You sell the tabula for 25. Uh, boom, right? You just made seven chaos. Might not sound like a lot, but think about how many tabulas you're able to actually, you know, make uh, if you're one of the first person to be able to make them because you have enough currency, right? So it's very, very important to keep that in mind. And then also, like I said, roles matter a lot, right? Now, roles don't matter on every single unique, and it's pretty rare. It's pretty rare that people will overpay for good roles on an item in a league start scenario because they just want the item that makes their build work. They don't care if the item is shiny or if it has good roles, right? But it is something that if the role literally decides whether the item is usable or not, then yes, it's something that you can consider flipping. Bones of Allure, for example, have move speed to be between 5 and 15. A 5% is worth nothing, and a 15% might have been worth as much as 20C, right? Well, it's flippable, but who's going to be willing to pay that 20C for an extra 10% move speed is something that is debatable. I don't think there's that many people... Uh, especially in a league start scenario. So that's just something to keep in mind. All right, so pushers, you want to focus on items that are just a couple X maximum. Typically, items that are in the chaos range is much better, right? Uh, so for example, when Toxic Rain is very popular, which is pretty much is every single league, you can see 11% of people were playing Toxic Rain. Bows are going to be, uh, you know, very good to craft because they're pretty much within this range or even lower, right? Uh, sometimes higher sometimes lower it really depends on the rolls on the bow and whatnot and how it's crafted uh, but it's within this range okay so the next thing that we need to talk about other than who has currency is what do people buy right step two is going to be what do people buy right and this is again something that you can pause the video and think about it for a minute uh what is what what do people buy right think about yourself in a league start scenario you're going through the campaign, you get to maps, you start mapping. What is the first thing that you buy in Trade League Softcore? Okay, well, the answer is simple. Damage, right? Damage is the first thing that you care about. Dying, no one cares about dying, okay? Even if you die, so long as you're in Trade League Softcore, like I said, uh, you don't care, right? Most of the time, you're going to buy that cast on death portal setup. You're going to set up so that if you die, you can go right back to where you were. It doesn't matter XP. Who cares about XP loss when you're level 74, right? It takes half of, it takes two packs, matter of fact, and you've made up all that XP back. It doesn't matter, right? But what do you absolutely hate, right? Well, getting to the boss at the end of the, at, at the end of the map and taking 30 seconds to kill it. Now that's something that is like, okay, I need more damage on my build, right? Damage, 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 damage. That is the first thing that people invest into when it comes to softcore trade league, which goes back to the fact that people invest in the ore bots, right? Because they want damage, right? Ore bots are the best way to get damage in the entire game by far. So what gives you damage? What's the what's the main thing that you can buy for additional damage? Well, links, right? A six link, a five link, and then a six link. Th that's pretty much the baseline go-to for most people, which is why if you look at builds on the first day of a league, the most used item was a tabula, right? Because the first thing that people care about is getting links. So this gives you two choices, right? 
you can go on with the flipping method, which would be, for example, Tabula, as I said. Let's say you buy those divination cards for chaos or whatever, and then you sell the Tabula for an additional profit, and then you make money, okay? That's one valid option. Now, the problem is, the more people... Everybody knows about flipping tabulas in this day and age. It's super, super, super common. Uh, and a lot of bots also do it. That's, that's another reason why it's not as good as it used to be. There's a lot of bots who are just set up to buy those tabula cards and sell tabulas. Uh, because it's extremely, extremely lucrative. And because they're bots, they're not human beings. They can offer the most ridiculous margins, even if it's only a couple chaos per tabula. It's still, uh, it's still currency that's you know generated out of nothing, uh, which is still valuable to them. You, as a human being, as an actual player, it's not exactly valuable to you. Okay, so what's the other, what's another solution that you can do? Well, you can buy five links, and then you can craft them, and then you can sell them. Okay, and you can do the same thing with six links. You can do the same. Uh, you can do the same here. You can buy a six link, you can craft it, and you can sell it for a profit. And one thing that's really important to note here is that six links is one of the first, one of the first big items that people buy okay like after their tabula if they're going to be using a tabula or if they're using a five link or whatever uh and then they build their entire character they get those life and res pieces of gear and they get their little 20c weapons and right they get their entire little setup going their little cluster jewels right they get all that but what's the next big thing that they buy is obviously going to be the fir the the first big sell is going to be six links so steps uh step three is going to be, I'm not sure I'm calling these steps, but whatever. What's the first big purchase? And I already answered that question. It's the six link, right? It's going to be damage again. So it's going to be six links. And you know what comes after that? I already mentioned it not long ago, but clusters. Clusters are huge for damage on a lot of builds. And in some, in some cases, they're basically uh, needed almost for builds to even function. Uh, in some cases, so clusters are going to be a big deal uh, as well. So what you want to focus on the most is if you're somebody who's going to be flipping or crafting. Now, espe we're especially in the realm of crafting right now, but we're also in the realm of flipping. Uh, we want to focus on six links because that's the first big purchase people are going to make with multiple exalts and then clusters. Now, clusters are not multiple exalts. People are not going to spend 5x on a cluster before they bought their their, five, uh, their six link and the rest of their build most likely, but they will buy a cluster for 50c, 20c, 30c, 40c, 50c, and a lot of these clusters are typically going to cost you a lot less to craft if you know how to do so, um, which again, this is not a video telling you exactly how to craft. This is a video about the mindset of somebody who wants to become good at making currency. All right. So the first big purchase, we know that are six links and clusters. So clusters, I, again, you could check out LSR's document on how to craft clusters and whatnot. You could check out you know, Craft of Exile, PoEDB, lots of methods to learn how to craft clusters properly. But one thing that I want to focus on a little bit more now is six links because six links are, are the big are the big purchase, right? They're the very expensive thing. A lot of builds in the in the especially early in the league are going to go for uniques that are six links uh just because it's it's what they plan out their pov for uh and in some cases it's just required for their build but there's also a lot of builds who will go with uh six link that are just rare for life and resistance and all that because they don't need any sort of uniques and typically a six link that's a rare is going to be much cheaper than a six link that's a unique in a league start scenario because we're not talking about awaken or orbing or anything like that we're talking about very basic stuff so when it comes to six links, what's the best way to actually go about crafting six links? You need to keep in mind Phenumal Plagued Arachnids, okay? Phenumal Plagued Arachnids. Uh, plagued Arachnids. Now, if you don't know what Phenumal Plagued Arachnids are, they are basically the split beasts. And the reason why I'm talking about Phenumal Plagued Arachnids here is because they allow you to uh, split an item in two. And for those who don't know, they do keep the links. So if I take... Uh, whatever item that I'm trying to craft here, like a six link, uh, that is that is six link, and I, I split it, I'm going to have two of them now. So I've got two of them that I can craft and two of them that I can sell. So what does that mean? It does mean that as a crafter or as a flipper, as a hideout warrior, one of the things that you want to pay really close attention to is going to be six links. There's a few ways to go about it. There's a lot of divination cards that will give you six links. Influence six links, non-influence six links, uh, specific six links, non-specific six links, 
specific six links with uh, specific item levels, six links with non-specific item levels, right? There is a lot going on there, but there are many, 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 many cards that will allow you to get a six link. Um, so you could basically buy these cards and then finish up the product, uh, the whole thing, and then get your six link and then craft it and sell it. And if it's a non-influence, you know, you could always split it because then you get the double value. As long as this Phenomal Plague Arachnid is cheaper than the price of the, the total divination cards that you use to get the six link, whatever it is, then you are technically going to be making profit. Uh, one thing to note when it comes to six links is that item level 86 is always going to be the best because that's what's needed for T1 Energy Shield, T1 Life, uh, T1 Evasion, all those T1s, T1 Armor even, 86. But uh, 84 is typically the minimum for T1 resistances, and that's kind of going to be typically the minimum threshold, but there are some exceptions to that. Uh, for example, when Trickster is a very popular ascendancy, which it wasn't this league, but when Trickster is a very, very popular ascendancy, people want chess pieces that have a ton of evasion and, um, and energy shield, something like that, a Sadist Guard, for example. And the thing about these is that the T1 for the flat, which is always the most important, it's always flat, the flat hybrid of uh, ES and uh, en uh, evasion is actually item level 73. I believe it's called Adelons. Uh, we can actually verify that. It might be 78, but I'm pretty sure it's 73. Let's see. Uh, I haven't crafted these in a while. So we are going for Dex and Int. And I know that it's called Adelon and that it's hybrid and it's flat. Oh, there it is. 73 Adelons. Uh, and that is for your T1. So what that means is that if you're focusing on crafting six links and you know that tricksters are very, very popular, you can uh, basically set up some live searches for ES and evasion chess pieces that are six link that are 73 and above of the bases that are actually good now which bases are actually good that's something i'll let you go find out on yourself it's not all that hard check out uh, the wiki and whatnot uh and then you can basically split those you get two of them and then you can craft them both uh how you go about crafting these chests is also something that i'll let you figure out yourself again this is not a crafting video this is a video about uh the mindset right what you're thinking of this is all what it's about is what are you thinking of uh, and six links are going to be the majority of your money so going back to my own league start with my partner uh this right here right especially this thinking about this or bots and focusing the the stuff that or bots care about and thinking about six links and that stuff is essentially how we made the vast majority of our money when it comes to the non-bossing portion of how much currency we made, right? It was almost entirely from six links and divination cards, right? So that's another thing, divination cards. Now, I could make an entire video that would be like two hour long about divination cards and every single divination card that people actually care about. But instead, what we'll do here, let me go ahead and find divination cards. I honestly don't remember where they are. Uh, let's see, divination cards, PADB divination cards. That'll be faster. Instead, what I'll do uh, is I'll give you guys the exact same tip that I gave you guys here, all right? What do people spend currency on when it comes to the first big purchases? Well, or bots, and then six links. Those are the, those are the main two things. And then what, what's the next thing that people spend currency on, right? The people who are not going to be buying six links and the people who are not ore bots, what's the thing that they spend the most on, right? Again, you can think about it. Well, we've already spoken about it and it comes right back to this. What do people buy? They buy damage, okay? So any of these divination card, any of these divination cards that when completed give you an item that provides damage for of course a meta build right something that's actually meta is going to be something that you can flip in order to make profit all right if it's not damage then it's going to be clear speed okay there are some builds that don't struggle with damage at all for example my league starter did not struggle with any sort of damage problems but it doesn't mean that because you have a lot of damage you have good clear okay so what people buy after damage is clear speed right so which divination cards will actually give you an item that provides clear speed all right here's an example the gladiator the gladiator gives you a nightmare bassinet 
which one of the outcomes from the uh, gladiator is going to be, let's see, does it say? Uh, let's see if it says. No, it doesn't. Uh, but here it is, right? One of the outcomes is Devoto's Devotion. Devoto's Devotion gives you a lot of move speed and also gives you a lot of attack speed, right? This is all things that are related to clear speed while, and also damage, technically, because it gives you a lot of attack speed, physical damage, and all that. But mostly, this is a speed-related item, okay? So, if a league is, you know, very heavy on melee builds that care about move speed, okay, well, mostly talking about Cyclone here, then the Gladiator is typically going to be a very good card to consider. Matter of fact, it was one of the best divination cards to flip back in the Legion League. I remember that Nightmare Bassinets or, or were going for, or not Nightmare Bassinets, but the, the Unique, which I honestly can't remember the name of again. Uh, let's see, what's it called? It is called uh, Devoto's Devotion. Yeah, right. Devoto's uh, was going for something like 1.5x or something, and I was getting these cards for a handful of Chaos each. And it was like a 50-50, or at least it seemed to be a 50-50 between uh, Devoto's and the Bringer of Rain. So 50% of the time I was losing all my currency, but 50% of the time I was like doing it times 10 on my currency. It was pretty ridiculous amounts of profit on this card. But if I was to do this card this league and Devoto's is 5C, even if the Gladiator is only 1C, technically I'm losing money every time because I'm going to get the Bringer of Rain half the time, right? So it's not good. So... While you're looking at whether the outcome is going to provide damage or survivability uh, or, or clear speed to a build, you also need to take consideration, is it something that is going to uh, be meta, right? Do people care about this item? So here's a good one. Um, what's it called again? Unending Hunger, right? Unending Hunger was a great example this league of how we made a good bit of money. Uh, so what we did is we buy the Craving card. The Craving card is a set of four cards and it gives you Unending Hunger. Unending Hunger is a very cheap jewel, typically. It's nothing crazy. But in a League Start scenario, this is one of the best item that you can get on a, I believe, a Spectre build. Um, let's see here. Yeah. It's one of the best items that you can get on a Spectre Guild, to, a Spectre's build, sorry, uh, to make them clear faster. And it gives you a ton of clear speed, right? With 40 intelligence, Ray Spectres have a 50% chance to gain Soul Leader for 20 seconds. This is huge, right? This is like the equivalent of throwing a Headhunter on your Spectres. It's massive for clear speed. Uh, so this this was very, very good in this league start. Matter of fact, every time that Ray Spectre is a, uh, is a good spell, is a is a meta spell uh and it pretty much is every single league this is a viable flip so we could buy this card for let's say 40 chaos which means we would get 160 chaos for the set and then we were selling the unending hunger for like 220 250 chaos making over 100 chaos every single time which i don't know if you were there around league start but that was over a full exalt worth of profit right because we identified that Unending Hunger is something that people actually need because it provides damage, or in this case, mostly clear speed, to a build that is meta, right? It was, uh, let's see, in day one, I believe it was the second most popular build. Let's see. Uh, third most popular build with 8% of players. And the thing is, this 8%, you could do 8% of 7,000, but that's only the people on the ladder. But you do need to consider the fact that the people on the ladder are pre pretty much the only people with any amount of currency uh, when it comes to a league start scenario. Uh, you know, the, the vast majority of people who are not on the ladder at all, like below level 70s or 80s or whatever, right, 79, most of them are not yet in maps or they're just getting to maps so they don't have any currency. So focusing on these people is really the only thing that matters in a day one, day two, because anything below that, they don't have money. It's not like later on in the league where people will respec and they'll have a level 70 character, which is not a ladder, but of course their main character is where they farmed all their currency, right? So that's something to remember. But there's a lot of these divination cards. Now, which ones are good and which ones are bad is, again, something that I'll let you guys think of for yourself. But there are a lot of very good ones. Now, one thing that I will say when it comes to divination card flipping is that you typically want to stay away from uh, any sort of gambling. Anything that you don't know what you're going to get right? Or at least that you don't have a good idea of whether it's like a 50-50 or one in three or something like that. I'd probably stay away from uh, because it doesn't take much to basically uh, get a hard reset on, on your profit 
that you could have made in the last two hours if you get really, really unlucky. Uh, for example, uh, if we take, uh, let's see, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Let's say Jack in the Box, right? Say Jack in the Box, it gives you a unique item. Even if it's only 1C and you need 4 of them, that's a total of 4C for a unique item. Let's say you only have 20C to your name. You're like, okay, I'll do 5 sets of Jack in the Box. I'm probably going to get something worth 20C. Well, you could easily get literally nothing and then lose all your money. Now, this is a really ridiculous example because I don't think anybody would be dumb enough to do that. Uh, but this does apply to a lot of uh, these other... Um, these uh, these other divination cards which if you don't know exactly what you're going to get in my opinion you should stay away from it uh, because you want to go for consistency which brings me to my next point actually no there's one thing i want to mention before that uh, i want to go back to who or sorry uh to 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 number one who is this currency right because i spoke about groups and i spoke about pushers but there's also one more group of people who have a lot of currency even as early as the first or second day of a league uh, and uh, the reality is that it's it's not something that we can do is ignore them even if what they do is not allowed and that is going to be the arm tiers right the people who spend their actual money in order to buy currency in the game now i do want to say that this is something that breaks terms of service you can get banned for this i don't advise anybody does this but it's not a good idea to ignore those people because they are some of the richest people in the early game so now the question becomes how do we focus on the arm tiers to try to get to sell them items that nobody else can buy faster than anyone else can buy them right and this is actually how i made most of my currency in the harvest league um i if i remember correctly i made nine mirrors in the first seven days of harvest or so uh so i was making over one mirror per day and nearly every single thing i sold in that league, it was the people buying currency for real life money, right? And you could be like, oh, Matt, how do you know that? Well, when somebody comes to your hideout and is buying a 70x chess piece, which at that point is nearly a mirror, and he has four challenges and he's level 80, there's something fishy going on, right? And you can't say that every single one of these people did that. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's, it's fair to assume that uh, uh, some of them, if not most of them, uh, were, you know, taking part in, in the RMTing thing. And here's the thing about RMTing. You're not allowed to do it. And again, I don't condone it. Uh, but you're allowed to sell things to these people because you don't know where the currency comes from. And you'll never get punished for not knowing where the currency comes from because it's not your fault. All you did was craft an item and then someone bought it from you. You have no responsibility in this. But... Again, it's not a good idea to ignore those people. Matter of fact, it's a good idea to try to target these people. So the question becomes, how do we target these people? Well, the funny part about these people is a lot of them, the reason why they even do this is because they don't have time to really play the game, but they watch these videos and they watch these streamers and they watch the content and they see these super crazy zoomy builds, you know, Headhunter and all that crazy flashy stuff. And they're like, I want to do that too, but I don't have the time. So instead, I'll just buy my way in. It's a very common uh, is very common way of thinking for a lot of people. So a lot of the time what they do, these people, is they sort by DPS on Pewee Ninja. Literally, that's what they do. They just go by DPS, and whatever is the highest DPS build in the game, most of the time, that's what people are going to be playing. These people, that's typically what they're going to be playing. And it's funny because if I had access to all the previous leagues uh, and not just Ultimatum, uh, I could actually prove this to you guys by just looking at some of these people. Now, of course, we don't want to call them out on video, especially without any proof. Uh, but a lot of the people is exactly what they'll do. So if you want to take advantage of this yourself, all you have to do is check out the highest DPS builds on POE Ninja. Right? So right now, it looks like it's Elemental Hit. It's Elemental Hit almost every single league and typically going to be bows, bow-based. Uh, bow and then you look at this guy, right? Rank 1 DPS. What is he using in his build? That And and uh, how do I reproduce, uh, reproduce these items in order to sell them to other people, right? So you could look at his quiver, look at his bow, look at his chest piece, look at all these different items. And if you can find out a way to craft these semi-deterministically or with fossils or with harvest reforges, whatever it is, right? Essences sometimes could be anything if you can find a way to craft these items uh 
then you can basically take advantage of the fact that these people look good on PoE Ninja. And the, the fact is, some of these builds are not even good, right? Uh, you'll see, uh, like for example, last league, there's a lot of PoE, war or PoE Ninja Warriors when it comes to DPS that their builds don't even work. They don't even function, but it doesn't matter because they look good and their numbers are higher than other people. And yeah, because these people who do that, like I said, right, buy currency, because a lot of them, uh, they don't have that much time to play the game. They also don't have that much game knowledge, so they can't even realize if a build is actually good or not, or playable or not. All they care about is getting items that look the same as the people they're looking at in order to have a character that feels the same or that has the same or similar damage numbers, right? So this is how you take advantage of that crowd. It's going to be to basically have a look at what other people are doing for damage and just replicate these exact same crafts. And I can guarantee you this works uh, because I've done it before. I have went through these characters that have the highest DPS builds and crafted the exact items that these people are using and they sell so much faster than anything else. Period, right? Because a lot of these people, uh, they, they just want something that looks exactly the same. So if you're able to offer something that looks exactly the same, they will buy it. Uh, and I've sold some items that cost me 20, 30 X to make for literally 100 exalts in some past leagues, uh, just due to the fact that it looked the exact same as the rank one DPS on PoE, uh, PoE Ninja. So definitely something to keep in mind. Now, this is a little bit later in the league, uh, definitely not a day one sort of thing. Typically on day one, if you look at DPS, uh, nobody really has any DPS. Most people are on really scuffed builds, and there's a ton of different builds out there. This is more something that starts around day three. Once people start having a little bit more currency, uh, you'll see that, yeah, exactly, right? It becomes a lot more uh, obvious which build is going to be the highest DPS build. And as you can see, again, it's almost entirely Ellie hits. Uh, but another thing that you can't forget about doing is not just necessarily looking at DPS on the entirety of PoE Ninja, but also looking at specific builds. So if I go to Spectral Shield Throw, then I can sort by DPS. And instead of crafting for Elemental Hit, then I could be crafting the highest DPS items for the most meta build on top of being the highest DPS build that's the most meta, which also is going to be increasing my odds of, uh, of selling these items for a profit. And, of course, selling them faster, which is what it's all about. In the early game, it's all about moving items, right? Um, you're better off making an item and making 10 or 20c profit and then making it again and again and again and again than making an item and making 1x profit but selling it in 6 hours, right? So it's all about the amount of things that you can move. Uh, and this brings me to my last point that I want to make in this video, and that is going to be, uh, I guess, I'm not sure why I'm calling this steps, but step 4. Uh, and that is going to be, geez, uh, step four is going to be every chaos matters, okay? And this is something that I think a lot of people have a really, really hard time understanding because of the way that they are, I guess, uh, brought up in the game and the way that content creators and whatnot uh, will educate them almost, if you want to say it like that. Uh, it's a very common thing in the in this game in this uh, in this community and all that. that people will say that efficiency is number one. You know, if once you have enough currency, you can ignore five C trades or not necessarily ignore the trades, but raise the price or vendor the items. It's all about efficiency. I'm not gonna leave my map for five C. I'm not gonna do this for two chaos. I'm not gonna. That's true, right? This is good advice and that's very true because the more efficient you are, uh, you can start to stop caring about those very little things. But in a League Start scenario, it's all about the essentially the uh, the concept of compounding interest. Okay, uh, it's the exact same thing. It's about getting small gains very, very, very quickly that will compound into bigger gains. Remember earlier, I was talking about divination cards and how we were doing a specific divination card that was giving us about an X profit every single time or so or whatever, right? Well, that was great. But the thing is, you can't get there initially right you're not going to start the league and have 160 chaos available and nobody's going to start the league and have 220 chaos available to buy the item from you that's just not how that works so there needs to be a start to where you are actually able to make currency and that start can be as low as two chaos three chaos five chaos it doesn't even matter it could literally be alchemies right you could literally start off 
by flipping currency because bots won't have currency that early into a league. So uh, typically uh, flipping currency is actually super, super good um, for the first like 24 hours because you're, it, there's no real bots because they don't have the, the currency available yet. So human beings have an advantage there, uh, which doesn't last for very long, but it's something you can take advantage of if you don't mind setting up all your ratios properly and keeping track of them because there's a high, very high level of, of dynamic in a league start scenario for the value on anything, right? Things can go up and down extremely drastically, extremely, extremely quickly. Uh, so you do need to stay on top of your game, but even flipping currency can work. Typically currency will work. Uh, divination cards are good. Prophecies are really, really good. Faded unique prophecies are massive for early game currency, right? Think of, for example, Hyrie's uh, Hyrie's Bite turned into Hyrie's Demise or whatever the quiver's name is, right? If you can get Hyrie's Bite for an alchemy and you can get the the um, let's just say the the prophecy for the faded unique for 50 chaos uh, that would be like 50.5 chaos and let's just say you can sell for 55 or 60 chaos it's not that much profit but it's very very quickly uh and you can do that the same exact thing for very 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 cheap faded uniques if they are mandatory to any build uh so of course this is something that you can verify under the search filter for example I don't know, let's just say Died Bellow, right? Died Bellow is uh, not very popular, right? But if we look on the first day of the league, maybe it was more popular, right? Well, there was only 11 people using it. Let's see the second day of the league, maybe day one was too early. Uh, so 31 people using it, right? So it's, it wasn't the most popular thing, but if you're the only person who has them around, even if you're only making a handful of chaos on this specific faded unique, and this is just one unique. I'm not saying it's the best or anything. It's just one that I was thinking about. Um, you can actually start off with literally faded uniques. It's one of the best ways to start, in my opinion. Back in the day, it was all about crafting flasks, but that's nowhere near as strong as it used to be. So I think faded uniques is a really good way to get going. And then you move on to, once you have enough currency, divination cards. Uh, and after divination cards is when you'll actually start on doing some more crafting related stuff and flipping uh, more expensive item, going back to focusing on ore bots. But you're very, very beginning. You want to... Make sure to take every trade that you can get. And if a flip is giving you even two chaos, you should be doing it no matter what uh, because it's profit. And any amount of profit is better than none because you have to remember that the value of chaos, especially initially, right? I'm talking the first six hours, 12 hours, is massive, right? Two chaos when exalts are 100 C is not much. It's like, yeah, who cares, right? 1 50th of an exalt. But when exalts are 20 C, like they were this league for the first like 12 hours, that's one tenth of an exalt, right? So it only takes a few of these trades and you have an extra exalt that nobody else really has available to them, uh, which is buying power that is really, really, really big. Uh, so yeah, every chaos matters. But that's pretty much it. I think this realistically, I know that the video is a little bit all over the place and it was extremely long, uh, but this is the mindset and the mentality that you need to get into if you want to start to really make a lot of currency. And that's all it is, right? A lot of people think there's secrets and there's like some hidden shenanigans and rituals and rich witchcraft involved. There's none of that, okay? It really is just this. Knowing who to target, right? Knowing who has currency and who's willing to pay these prices for these items. And then once you know who has the currency knowing, well, the people with currency, what do they want to buy, right? Because if you're offering things that they want to buy and they have currency, you have an advantage over everyone else who's offering all the other stuff that nobody wants to buy, right? So that is extremely, extremely important to understand. And it's kind of funny because we kind of failed that in our league start scenario, me and my buddy. Uh, we treated the league like any other and we didn't take into consideration uh, we didn't expect the league to be as slow as it was. We didn't expect to be people to be as behind and as poor as they were. So we started crafting things that we would sell in any other league, no problem, and they weren't selling. So we basically shot ourselves in the feet uh, because we were locking currency behind items that were not moving at all because we failed to realize uh, who had currency and we failed to realize that the people who have currency, what do they want, right? Because the people who had currency... We're not wanting to get the items that we had. And unfortunately, there was no crowd who was 
you know, trying to get rank one DPS on PoE DB or sorry, PoE Ninja on the second day of a league who is willing to pay these ridiculous prices uh, either. So we really we failed. We we quite frankly we uh, we miss misjudged the economy, the state of the economy, and uh, we were we got stuck, right? Of course, we still had very, very good results, you know, Headhunter, Day 2, all that stuff. But realistically, we got stuck and we made a mistake by not following the fundamentals. So the reason why I'm making this video is that some people who really want to basically be able to do the same thing um, don't make the same mistake. And of course, the people who aren't aware uh, can start to really think about these different steps. I'm not sure why I'm calling these that, but these different steps and how to take advantage of that going forward. Because like I said, I'm not going to be telling you flip this and flip that or craft this and craft that because the reality is that it's too dynamic it's not because i don't want to share some secrets i already have with different things in the video but the thing is it's dynamic what's going to be meta next league i don't know who's going to have currency this uh, next league i don't know who's going to what's going to be the meta i don't know but what i can tell you is who you want to be crafting these items for and uh of course basically your target audience for your crafting and your flipping so hopefully that was everything I needed to cover uh, in order to get that, you know, th that brain of yours going zoom zoom in order to get yourself prepared for the future of making currency. Now, before I go, as always, I want to say a huge thank you to my supporters. Jordan, Fruitfly, Thomas, Nairoth, Master, Tim, Nate, Jacob, Flame Scorpion, Reese, Emil, Rotomillens, Alex, Brandon, Don, Joseph, Welcome Back, Pando, Atticus, Scott, Bark, Grimoire, Johnny, Ronald, Kevin, Mercury, and Bizen, as well as, of course, anybody else who supported me in the past and anybody else who was here from Anonymous. Hopefully this video was insightful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.